you know what, what, what made me thinking about it? Uh, whenever I went to, my, um, uh, to our second house in South Africa, um, I was with the children, you know, I was in free time. Um, I was struggling wearing a watch. You know, I love my Lange and Zöne watches, but would you wear it to go to the beach? Would you wear it to do... You wouldn't, probably. So, um, in that case, I'm almost, you know, my own customer. And that's why we eventually decided to, to dig deeper into that idea. You know, what would be a typical Lange watch, but which also would be different to what we offer today. So, that's how the idea started. I'm you know, sure we live in a time where most people would not like to express their, their, their wealth ostentatiously. And still, of course, is a very discreet form of uh, showcasing what you like and what your personality is without having it in gold or platinum. Um, I think that's one side to the story. And the other side to the story is if you live an active life, and I think today, a lot of customers spending so much money for a watch, they live a very active life. Um, if you have a watch with a leather strap, it comes with compromises. People call it also the casualization of luxury goods. You know, you, you want to have your car driving everywhere, you want to have your back being exposed to rain or sun. And I think with watches, it's almost similar. So that's the three topics I believe that make steel watches so admirable in today's market. Our benchmark is always our own brand DNA and not somebody else. Um, of course you look to the market um, but it doesn't give you any guidance because if you follow somebody the best thing you can get is a Me Too product. So you have to go different roads, you have to make different things and it has to be very much yourself, otherwise, you know, you end up in that we don't know what that watch stands for territory. The pride of my people, the level of involvement and engagement, but also the dealing with, you know, the highs and the downs. Um, was a journey that I've never experienced before in any other watch because we're entering new territory here. Um, in the past we always could refer to what we did either with pocket watches or early on. Now for the first time we don't have any sort of historical guidance to what we are doing and that in itself created a challenge um, and maybe that we choose the name of Odysseus is on purpose because it reflects this Greek hero's uh, long journey back home. It was a little bit like our long journey from ideas to what I now have around my wrist. Like with the Datograph Lumen and the Lange One anniversary sets and so on and so forth, yes, but that's not a question of steel uh, or um, uh, precious metal, it's a question of Lange watches, you know, and our Lange and Zöne usually if they come up new on the market there is a waiting list and I'm pretty sure there will be a long waiting list for the steel watch. That's not done on purpose, that's not a marketing gimmick, but again if you produce the way we produce it comes with limitations and our limitation is that we cannot just ramp up production because it's the same watchmaker that works on these watches that also works on the other watches. So that's automatically will mean people will have to come with some patience because that's what we stand for you know we are not people that have movements and then they use one movement to go through you know multiple design variations what we stand for is perfection in movement and that's actually the title of uh, the Odysseus um, and to create a face and I think that was the biggest challenge you know you wanted to create something which later on can form the base of a family. Because if you, you know, the, the day date indication means that the dialed side is pretty covered. So you have to think right now about what comes next, what comes next to create that family feeling. Because the one thing for sure is, you know, in the foreseeable future, that day date indication 
will always be the indication for the Odysseus.